Today we're going to look at this nice identity involving two of my favorite types of numbers, Fibonacci numbers and binomial coefficients. So we're going to prove that f sub 2n, the 2nth Fibonacci number, where n is a positive integer, is equal to the sum as m goes from 1 to infinity of n choose m, that's the binomial coefficient, times f sub m, the mth Fibonacci number. And now let's just recall how the Fibonacci numbers are defined. So we've got these two seeds, f sub 1 and f sub 2, they're both equal to 1. And then after that, the two-step recursion takes over. So we've got fn plus 1 is equal to fn plus fn minus 1. Now I think there are probably several proofs of this identity, but we're going to do an induction proof, and it's going to involve a step that uses something that we've proven on the channel before. So I'll point that out when we get to it. So since we're doing induction, we need a base case. Let's take our base case to be the n equals 1 case. And now let's observe that f sub 2 is equal to 1. Notice the n equals 1 case will give us a 2 in the subscript here. But 1 is the same thing as 1 choose 1 times f sub 1. Well, f sub 1 is 1, and 1 choose 1 is 1, but that's the same thing as the sum as m goes from 1 to 1 of 1 choose m, f sub m. So there we have it. That's all we need to do for our base case. So now what I want to do is do my induction step. So let's set that up here. So induction steps will always begin with an induction hypothesis. And in this case, our induction hypothesis needs to be a strong induction hypothesis. So let's get that set up. So let's suppose for some k bigger than 1, we have f sub 2 times j is equal to the sum as m goes from 1 up to j of j choose m f sub m, and this is going to be for all j between 1 and k. So what differs from a normal induction hypothesis and a strong induction hypothesis is that for the strong induction hypothesis, we suppose that something holds for every case up to a point. And in this case, it's the kth case, instead of just uh, assuming that it holds for one and proving the next. Okay, so anyway, let's get to it now that we have this strong induction hypothesis. And so I'm just going to start with the sum as m goes from 1 to k plus 1 of k plus 1 choose m of f sub m. So that's going to be the k plus first case after assuming, like I said before, the first, second, third, up to kth cases. Now the first thing that I'm going to do is apply the standard recursion. It's really the defining recursion for binomial coefficients. So here maybe I'll underline this in blue just to point out where it shows up and what I'm about to write down. So this will be equal to the sum as m goes from 1 to k plus 1 of now I'm going to put this in blue parentheses just that's coming from that blue underline and then here we'll have the binomial coefficient k choose m plus the binomial coefficient k choose m minus 1. So like I said, that is simply the defining recursion for my binomial coefficients. Okay, and then I've got f sub m here. Okay, nice. And now what I'll do at this step is I'll split this into two sums. And so let's observe that the first sum will be equal to the sum as m goes from 1 to k plus 1 of k choose m f sub m. But I'm going to immediately edit that. And I'm going to edit that by taking this k plus 1 and replacing it with a k. And that's because observe if we have k choose k plus 1, which is what we would get if we plugged m equals k plus 1 into that binomial coefficient, we would get 0. That's 
kind of by definition of binomial coefficients. K choose K plus one would be the number of K plus one element subsets of a K element set. But of course, you can't have a subset which is larger than the set that you started with, so that's why that is zero. Okay, and now for my next bit, so I'm just gonna underline this one in green and I'll put a star out here just to point out for my next bit, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna re-index this to replace all of the Ms with M plus ones. So that's gonna leave me with the sum as M goes from zero up to K. And so now notice it starts at zero at this point because when M plus one is equal to one, M is equal to zero. And it ends at K for a similar reason. Now what I've got is K choose M and then F sub M plus one. Okay, now I'm gonna do two steps kind of without making a new line. So my first step will be to take this F sub M plus one and replace it with the defining recursion for my Fibonacci numbers. So that's gonna be FM plus FM minus one. And my second step will be to take this zero and replace it with a one and then add one over here. And that's because the zeroth term in that sum is equal to one. So we might as, might as well do that. But now observe that I can apply my um, recursion, or sorry, I can apply my induction hypothesis two places. Let's observe that this yellow, or sorry, this pink underline is exactly one of the cases inside of my induction hypothesis. And then furthermore, this pink underline is in fact the same case in that induction hypothesis. And we'll get that from this binomial coefficient distributing over. And so that means that after applying the induction hypothesis to each of those, I'll have two F sub K, again, one from each of them. And then I've got my leftover terms, if you will. So I've got this F sub M plus one multiplying into the binomial coefficient there. And then I've got that one added out. But I'm gonna do something tricky here as well. I'm gonna take this F sub M minus one and that's gonna guide me into another re-indexing step. And my re-indexing step will be the same thing that I did before. So I'm gonna take all of the M's and replace them with M plus ones. Okay, so what will that leave me with? So now I'll have plus the sum as M goes from zero to K minus one of K choose M plus one. And then I'll have F sub M and then I've got this plus one on the outside. Okay, nice. And now let's maybe color code where these parts come from. So I'll maybe put an overline. This is coming from that yellow overline or sorry, that yellow underline. And then these are appearing from the pink underlines on the previous line. Okay, nice. But now what I'll do is apply that identity that I said I was gonna apply at the beginning of the video. And that is the so-called hockey stick identity. And I'm gonna apply it to this binomial coefficient K choose M plus one that I'm underlining in this peach color. So now let's go over here and I'll put just a note that that stuff that is underlined in that peach color is in fact equal to the following. So this is the sum as J goes from M to K minus one of J choose M. So again, like I said, that's the hockey stick identity. Okay, so now let's rewrite the line that we have. So let's see, now we're gonna have two times F sub K and then we'll have plus the sum as M goes from zero to K minus one and then times, or sorry, inside of that is the sum as J goes from M up to K minus one. And then we'll have, let's see, J choose M and then F sub M. Okay, nice. Now the next step is maybe one of the trickier parts of this, and that is we're gonna 
change the order of summation here. But before doing that, I'm gonna take this M right here and change it from a zero to a one. And that's because the zero Fibonacci number is just zero, kind of by definition. That's what you get if you extend this backwards. You could also take that as a definition. Notice that if M is equal to zero, we get the zero Fibonacci number. So that's why that kind of cancels out, if you will. And then we can kind of sketch out what's going on here with our change of summation. So let's maybe go here. Let's say this is the M axis. And then let's say this is the J axis. And let's notice that here we have M equals one and we're going all the way up to M equals K minus one. And then we're taking J from M to K minus one. So notice J equals K minus one is like right here. So I'm just gonna put this as the coordinate K minus one, K minus one. Then here this is one and notice J equals M would be that line right there. So let's maybe color code this a little bit better. Maybe we'll say that the region that we're summing over is here in red. Great. But now if we change the order of summation, notice that the inside sum M will now be going from one up to J and the outside sum j will going, be going from one to k minus one. So let's write that down. So here we have two f sub k, and then plus the sum as j goes from one to k minus one, and then inside of that is the sum as m goes from one to j of j choose m f sub m. So there we did it, we changed our order of summation. But now I'd like to observe that I can apply my strong induction hypothesis to this bit that I'm uh, underlining in green right here. In fact, it looks exactly like this over here. Uh, oh yeah, and I noticed that I forgot on the last two steps this plus one. So let's bring those back in here. And then maybe I'll put like a little line right there to, uh, partition off kind of my explanation parts. Okay, nice. So now let's apply the induction hypothesis here and let's observe that that's gonna give us two F sub two K. So let's maybe fix those. So we have two Ks there. There should have been two Ks. And then plus the sum as J goes from one to K minus one of F sub two J and then we've got this plus one here. Okay, nice. And now comes like maybe the final trick here. I'm gonna take one of these F sub two Ks and I'm gonna bring it inside of the sum and then make that into a sum up to K instead of K minus one. And then I'm gonna use a reverse version of this recursion to change the F sub two K. So let's see, now we're gonna have F sub two K and then we'll have plus the sum as j goes from one up to k of f sub two j plus one minus f sub two j minus one. And then we have a one at the end. But now I'll let you convince yourselves, maybe write the details if you want, but I'd like to observe that this thing that I'm underlining in brown will telescope and it'll in fact telescope down to F sub two K plus one minus F sub one, which is one. So F sub two K plus one minus one. But now that minus one is gonna attack the plus one and those are gonna cancel. And we're gonna be left with F sub two K plus F sub two K plus one, which is of course, F sub two K plus two, or in other words, F sub two times K plus one. But observe that starting over here on the left and ending over there on the right is exactly what we need to finish this proof by induction.